welcome to Supper Love Sunday. I'm Molly Neese with my husband Dan Neese, the helpful dad, and together we're here to do Supper Love Sunday. Many of you probably received, of course you all did, <laughs> received that delicious recipe and hopefully you were able to just make that together with, with your girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband in that kitchen because Supper Love Sunday that's what it's all about. It's about the food, the love, the joy that comes with all of that. And today, I'm Molly Neese of the Molly Sunshine Group, Legacy Producers, and Dream Big School. And I'm joined, like I said, with Dan Neese. Go ahead, tell me a little bit about yourself. I am Dan Neese, and I am the helpful dad. And, you know, it wasn't always uh, the helpful dad. It was kind of, you know, at one point in time, it might have been the lazy dad. That, it, that I think, is what it had been. And, uh, we we realized that wasn't a good marketing or branding. Correct. Either. You know, and, and what I do is, is you know, my goal is to is to help families, help individuals, um, lead better lifestyles. Uh, you know, it's not only eating healthy, but it, it's you know the spirituality. You know, it's your careers, it's your um, your physical exercise, and, and it's your overall relationships that help you lead a healthy lifestyle. And, and that's kind of where I'm going, and, and why I'm here, and why we made this wonderful food for tonight. And, and really the purpose of our show, and hopefully we'll have many more episodes to come for all of you, but really this part of the show is to invest in your relationships. Because Dan and I, we didn't always have a joyful, blissful marriage. And we still really work hard at it so that we can continue to have the marriage that we're proud to kind of own, live, and, and share with our seven-year-old son as well and, and into the future. Um, this year, we're celebrating our 10 years, so if, for those who have been on, yes, 10 uh, years, but it, it was not always blissful, and we'll get into a little bit of that. Um, Dan will share a little bit of his story and his journey, and I'll share a little bit of mine, so we're going to open up a little bit, but then what we're going to do is ask each other some questions that... We don't know what the questions are, but what we encourage all of you to do is when I ask them, you push pause, as Dan does a deep sigh, deep breath, <laughs> and, and vice versa, because um, when Dan and I first met, um, that's one thing that actually we did, and I'm really glad you didn't kick me to the curb, because that's something that we said that we would do at the, at every, at the end of every night, we would say, getting to know you, because... I was just coming out of a, of a relationship where we were both really good people, but not good for one another. So I put all the list of all the characteristics that I wanted in a man. I got the first one and not necessarily all the other ones. But then one day this gentleman, and the first one was actually money, was very well off, and this gentleman was. And one day he asked me, Molly, you're not the type of woman to stay at home and have babies, are you? I'm like... No, I'm really not. And didn't he introduce me to his best friend who uh, played soccer? And yes, that was Dan Neese. And he had all the other characteristics and the potential for number one. <laughs> so, so you know, again, you know, when we went through this journey and start dating again, we're like, you know what? Let's get to know one another. You know, because so often we jump on the physical side, but not necessarily the emotional side, and really the get to know you side. So, so we did that. So we thought it'd be fun for Supper Love Sunday to incorporate some of those questions, and uh, we'll see which ones he chose, and he'll see which ones I chose. But if you want to kind of just take a few moments to share, it, we had that seven year when we hit seven year. It, it was a bumpy, bumpy time. We we were almost divorcing at that point. So you want to give a little bit of a snapshot into that time? Well, you know, it was, you know, it started with, uh, you know. Uh, you know the realization of you know who we were you know over time you're, you're not the same person you were when you're 12 years old you know and not when you know when you're 22 when you're 32 when you're 42 and 52 you change you know those around you change and, and you know you really have to figure out yourself as you go along you know so for me you know i grew up i was always active you know we were always down the park we we're always playing soccer always playing out in the street you know always active. I was slim, slender, loved running, and came to a point, you know, a few years ago, and, and my son came up to us, you know, I was laying on the couch, he said, Dad, can we go outside and play? 
I kind of looked at him and said, not today. I, I'm, I'm really tired. Uh, you know, I had a long day at work. You know, and I looked at the clock. You know, it was 4.30 in the afternoon. You know, for, for those of you who don't know, I, I get up early. I go to work early, and my days end earlier. You know, so I'm not, you know, getting home at 6 o'clock, which, which is a blessing. You know, I love, you know, being able to, you know, get my son off the, at the bus stop at 4 o'clock. And, you know, I tried to figure out why I felt that way. Why was I tired at 4.30 in the afternoon? I had nine hours of sleep the night before. You know, what was, what was the purpose? And, and, well, the reason, and as I tried to figure it out, I, you know, for some reason, you, the first thing you do, I, you know, I went back and weighed myself. I weighed 230, 235 pounds, and you know some of you that you know I may have grown up with or, or knew me, you know however many years ago. Like, holy, holy, how, how do you get up to that? You know, and it, well, it was you know eating the wrong things, not doing the right things, and um, doing the wrong things, eating the wrong things again and again and again, and uh, you know it, it took that moment to wake myself up, and I figured you know what, it's time for me to start. So I dieted. I dieted. And, you know, well, I didn't really diet. I didn't change my lifestyle. I ate two cheeseburgers at Burger King versus three. You know, I, I got, you know, a double cheeseburger at McDonald's instead of a quarter pound, double quarter pounder. That kind of stuff. You know, I, you know, I, I had two, one beer instead of two beers. It, it was, you know, I'd lose the weight, but I still felt like crap. Why? Well, look what you're doing. Look what you're putting into your body, Dan. And I started to think, well, what, what did I eat when I was growing up? What did my mom put out? You know, well, my mom had fruits and vegetables. And there's your snack, kid. You don't like it? Tough. You're not eating it. Go outside and play. And if you come back inside and she asks what you were doing, well, I'm going to sit here and, you know, watch a little TV. Nope. It's still light out. Get outside. You want a snack? Well, here's what you have. You have fruit and your vegetables. And eventually you just start eating it because you were hungry. And you know you weren't getting until dinner. So I started eating my fruit and vegetables again. And sure enough, Lost more weight, felt a little better. What's missing? Exercise. Okay. Started to exercise. And while I started doing this, other things, parts of my life started to come back together. I started to feel passion for my career again. I started to feel, um, you know, my spiritual nature uh, coming back into me. And that's when one night Molly had a friend over to go for a walk, and you know, divine intervention, uh, it poured. Just an unbelievable thunder and lightning storm and no walk. So they sat down. So what do you do when you don't go for a walk? You have a glass of wine, right? So we sat down, had a, cup, a glass of wine. You know, I, had, you know, I sat down with them and she was discussing her journey and that she went to the school Integrative Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And we pray for, for our friend. Uh, you know, she's in the Peace Corps now and she's uh, doing her work uh, overseas and, and helping others. And, and it's just a beautiful story. So we, we, we still pray for her and pray for her safe journeys. And as we talked about this, you know, I kept thinking in my head, I'm like, well, this sounds pretty neat. So we were looking at it. We looked at it online. We went through the curriculum, this and that. And at first I thought about it for something to, you know, make money. Well, then I started thinking it was more for getting myself and getting my family in line. And, she, you know, and that's what it was. So she called Molly a couple days later and said, hey, listen, I just got an email for a friend, a $1,000 scholarship. Are you interested? You know, it's up, you know, two weeks from now. So we talked about it. We put the money out and did it. And I went through school and started to get myself even better. You know, I, I started to feel better. Our, our, our eating changed. You know, we look at me, look, well, my, oh. I'm is, already done. Those zucchini, zucchini wraps are good. And, and our seven-year-old loves them, too. That's a yeah. thing. Who, who knew? Well, <laughs> she doesn't like carrots or peppers, and mm -hmm. they're in there, and she just wolfed them down. Yeah. So, you know, that leads us to where we are today. You know, I, I continue up with my reading. I, I see what other health coaches and counselors are doing, and that's where I'm at. You know, we've helped ourselves, you know, to reach this point of health in our lives. You know, so now it's up to me now to, to get out there and help everybody else. You know, it's one person at a time, and, you know, let, let's get it right. You know, let's, let's be there for each other, and let's be there for our kids. And when you were hitting bottom, I was hitting top. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's the hard part, you know. As, as we continue through life, you know, I was at a time, too, when I, I worked for the university, and, and one of the deans said to me, Molly, you know the first thing to get cut, and this was when things were starting to sink with the economy, 
And they said, you know the first thing to kind of drop is the training. So what's your plan B? So of course you have a choice. Do you want to just wait for the pink slip? Or do you want to create your own, own journey? And of course I went through the creation. And while I never got the pink slip, I started creating a business. One with uh, Dave McGrogan, Rhino Living, motivational speaking company wrote our first book, then I wrote my book, and then I wrote four children's books, and then I had all the events, and then Molly Sunshine Group, then Legacy Producers, I help people create their own revenue streams, and then Dream Big School. So here's Molly, me, run, 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 create, 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 make a difference in thousands of people's lives. But yet, I wasn't taking care of our relationship. And in essence, I really was running away. Um, unintentionally, but maybe a little bit intentionally. I mean, I'll, I'll put it out there. Even our intimacy uh, went down. You know, everything really was collapsing. And while I was on high creating all this great business, other things were suffering. You know, how we communicated. You know, and, and there was a time that we just said, you know what, are we going to go do what we never intended to do when we said I do is say I don't and get a divorce, are we going to kind of work on it? And uh, we chose working on it and it took a lot of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of openness because at that time I wasn't getting any communication from Dan whatsoever. I had no idea what was going on. All I knew is I was seeing results of someone who was very different. Let's face it, he didn't plan on marrying an entrepreneur. I was not an entrepreneur when he met me. So again, it goes back to we change. And we need to find, as couples, and, I, and we encourage all of you, to see, okay, we're changing, but how it, can we continue to grow together? Through when we're raising our children, through nourishing ourselves, and nourishing our relationships outside. So, you know, while my business was booming, my relationships were suffering. So. You know, I, I'm grateful for Intergram Nutrition because it kind of opened your eyes. Because I'm your wife, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I'm a coach. But I remember one day I said, Molly, I have a coach. I don't need a coach. I'm like, that was an aha moment to be, I'm supposed to be a wife and a mother. And that's the role. So, and, and again, as we go through this Supper Love Sunday, you're going to get to really get to see a little bit of us. But we want you to really look inside yourselves and your relationships and have fun along with us. So Absolutely. That's... I'm sitting here still chewing and you know, as you're talking, you know, it's a, it's a great thing. We, you don't understand, we live in a, a little tiny rancher house and we, it's not normal for us to have all the lights on our house. We have all the lights on our house right now so we can get the best lighting to, to show you the best video we can for you. And there's one light that's on, and I'm sitting here looking up at it. I might just get up in the middle of this video and go take care of it. You know, there's cobweb. It's really bothering me. Oh and my so, gosh, I do see it. <laughs> so there's a light we normally don't have on, and there's a cobweb. And I'm like, man, I thought I cleaned this whole house this morning. You know, so here we are, here we are, and you know, but that's you know, that's kind of where I, you know, where I am. That you know, was and still am. You know, it's it's. it's um, but that's yeah. a great segue. Uh -huh. You know, Dan's gonna be writing a book called It Takes Two because. Okay, you're hearing that he cooks, he cleans, he goes to the grocery store, you know? And he's a very manly man. Laundry. Oh, yeah, laundry. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's, you're, you know, I might be, Mow one the lawn. would say, yes, you might laundry. <laughs> yeah, gratitude, opportunities for gratitude. <laughs> just throwing, just shoveling it in there, folks. Let's make it public. But, you know, we had to renegotiate our marriage. We call it renegotiation because there are certain things. Dan was doing, 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 and I was not able to be as present as I really needed to be in, in the family unit. So one of the things that we did was Dan said, okay, you know, can you keep it to a limit that you go out? Because I do a lot of speaking engagements, a lot of networking engagements, only two per week. And I said, absolutely. Um, I said, if I would get more, I'll talk to you about that and see if that's okay. And Many women, when I talk to them about that, they say, why are you asking your man for permission? You just do it. I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm like, you know what? It takes two. I'm like, I'm not respecting him. You know, if I say, you know what? I'm just going out and that's just the way it is. You know what? We need to remember what we were taught in kindergarten, you know, and about love and respect and checking in with one another and open communication. 
And we lost sight of that for a while, and that's why we are now delivering these Supper Love Sundays for all of you, because it's about nourishing your bodies, but nourishing your relationships, too. So that said, you want to get into the questions? Let's do it. Now, oh gosh, I'm a little nervous, because I'm like, oh my gosh, what questions did he choose? But, but it's all good. Impromptu and fast. Do you want to start, or do you want me to start? I can start. Okay. So that's why when you're listening, I'll eat my chili. <laughs> there you go. So, past. It's funny, you did, she, Molly, did, Molly gave me a, a card to write questions on, and, and we're starting with past, and it looks like they're library cards, and it says date due at the top. So, uh, we'll see, and it says, please do not remove this card from pocket over and over again, and we have a stack. I'm kind of thinking, okay. <laughs> so. Reuse, recycle, everyone. Yes. So, we move from that, and, you know, and the question is, you know, what is your earliest memory, and does it involve sight, smell, sound, touch, or all of the above? Earliest memory? Not, not today. It's not... Like how back, far into the past? Oh, okay. I got one. It was when I was a teenager, I'd say maybe 12 or 13, I was really blessed to have an entrepreneur father. And we would go uh, to different places. He had a company in the Dominican Republic. And, uh, and I remember going there and just meeting this really awesome guy who worked for the hotel. He's a little bit older than me, but he taught me how to merengue. So it, it, was, it was, I guess you would say, sight, sound, touching. Wait, did I just say that? We were dancing. <laughs> but it's what got them all, you know, and it was so much fun. It was just liberating, you know, to just let go, enjoy life, and find a new passion. That sounds like, I mean, what's it, like Carmen Miranda kind of stuff, like pineapples and banana hats and stuff like that? Who's Carmen Miranda? Miranda. Who's that? She was a dancer with the pineapple hat and the grapes and the bananas and stuff. Okay, it concerns me that, that, that he stuff. knows this woman's well, name. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's a Jimmy Buffett song. You know, oh. they don't dance like Carmen no more. So it's, it's. Oh, look at yeah. that. So it's, she had the big hats and, yeah. you know. Oh, Actually, in, in, in sorority days at Gettysburg College, we did that for Rush. So I was the pineapple lady then. There you go. But not in that memory. Very well. <laughs> that was probably too much information. He didn't know that either. <laughs> well, as long as I had our fruits and vegetables. Well, wait, um, okay, next question. Okay. All right, you ready? Okay, so you just did the past. Yes. So who was your, and by the way, we're doing these questions. We want you as Dan does a heavy breathing sigh. As our sons say, I gasp. <laughs> but anyhow, we want you to pause it any moment and ask one another that question and see what you learn from one another. Because the more we learn, the more we share, the more we grow. It's fun to learn things that you might not otherwise know. We actually do it as a whole family, too. So, ready? I am. Who was your childhood idol and why? Wow. I'm eating the chili now. <laughs> See how it works? You start I, would say, I would say Eddie Haskell, but you know. You Eddie might, Haskell? Yeah, you might not know who that is. Wait, isn't that like the Leave, punk kid? Yeah, from Leave with the Beaver. No, I'm kidding. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no, my, right. no, my, my childhood idol, I would say, is uh, probably Pele. You know, I grew up playing soccer, and you know, Soccer, obviously, you know, to this day, it's still not a popular sport in our country once you get past, you know, your, your, your elementary school ages. It starts, you know, to go off, and it's not popular among masses. So who did we have to look at? You know, we saw Pele. Well, Giorgio Canaglia as well, but Pele, who? Giorgio Canaglia, he played for the Cosmos. Um, I drink those. Yeah, but so did Pele. I paid for the Cosmos as well. Okay. Um, so, you would hear about Pele, and he had this natural ability. You know, he would run through teams. He would score goals that you couldn't believe. He would do bicycle kicks and all kinds of stuff. You know, and you just thought, wow, you know, he's it. You know, it, it just happened. He, he has all this God-given ability. And as you get older, you start reading things about your idols. And what I would read is... 
He had to work at it. Just because he had this natural ability to be where he was, it didn't stop him from being better. Because once he saw somebody that was catching up to him in, in skill, or maybe, you know, maybe might be scoring as many goals as he was, he would work harder to continue to be the best. He was already at the top. He was there. But he did not want... The only reason he wasn't going to be on top is because he chose, he would choose that it was no longer time for him to play soccer anymore. Mm. It was, it was him, it, you know, it was, it was the best at their best. And showing you that it's not just getting out there and it happens, it's seeing how, how you do it to get to that point. I really, really enjoy, well, let me put, I really, really enjoy this chili, first of all. That is amazing, man. Good. Ten plus on that. I'm on fire in a sweet kind of way. There you go. So, but what you were talking about, Pele, is it Pele? Yes. Pele? You know, many of us may not have the the inner circle that we dream to have one day, but intentionally you will have it because you're going to look for them. But those idols, I mean, I saw the passion that comes out of you. I mean, sometimes I think that we forget about not looking who we want to be like, but oh, who we don't want to be like, you know? So, so we encourage all of you, if, if you struggled with who to think for your childhood idol, well, get a new one. But we should always be looking for role models in many parts of our life, I would say. Business, career, you know, health. You know, I look up to you, you know, because that's one of my, my downfalls, my limitations. No, I am all of them. You are, and I'm grateful for that. Stop. Unless I wear my platform heels, and then, you know, it's all good. Yeah. But, but it's those kind of things that we need to think about our relationships, mm -hmm. who we surround ourselves with, and what memories we choose to recall really kind of sets the stage for what it is we're going to be attracting right. into our life and how we're choosing to live our life. So, all right, I'll get off my soapbox. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, you know, looking at, you know, it, it, was, it was Pele, you know, I, I didn't reach his level, you know, but it was it was him you know, that made me think. Rather than have my father drop me off at the park with all my soccer balls, it was putting the five or six balls in a bag and running running the four miles to get to the the field, and then running back. You know, I would go practice by myself, and I would, you know, do running drills and you know crazy stuff, and people thought I was nuts. But that's you know, I wanted to be I wanted to be the best at, at that, and uh, you know, so. You know, that inspired me to do that. And that alone time is important, too. You know, I don't know if any of our questions will talk about that, but what do you do for that solitude, alone time, that rejuvenation, that charge? So, all right. So, I just, wait, you just asked me that? I just asked you that. Yeah, I you, you that. okay. Your turn. Okay. I have for you, describe your best friend from childhood. My best friend. I'd say we had a group of maybe four or five girls that kind of hung out. But my best friend, I would choose Michaela Sunday. She actually lives in Westchester. I was born and raised in a small town, USA, Hanover, Pennsylvania. But um, I could choose Michaela because out of all the people that I was friends with at my high school, she is still in my life. We're very different people. But she fills me up in a way that I don't always get from all the other people in my circle. You know, so I'd say the old, whole, old adage of to be a friend, you gotta, what is that adage? Like, you, to get a friend, you gotta be a friend? I say you're on your own on this one. Oh gosh, Bollyisms, I'll wing it. But, but, you know, surrounding yourself by the people who really love you and accept you for who you are and not judge you. That, that would be Michaela to a T. You know, many a times my parents thought she was a bad influence on me. But, you know, sometimes it went the other way. But, of course, we were good influences when we needed to be there for one another. And so I'd say definitely Michaela, because she still would be there for me no matter what. Mm -hmm. And, that's, and that's, a, you know, that's a great thing about having true friends, is that you, know, you may go away from each other for a period of time, and there might be that time when you truly do need somebody, and it's it's amazing how they just come back in. You might not even call them or reach out. They might just show up at the door one day and say, you know, I thought I needed to see you. 
-hmm. That was one thing, you know, from from you know being with Molly is is I never really believed in that kind of stuff, and you know it's strange some of the things that happen, but it's so much fun. So uh, you know it, it's it's enjoyable to to see those things. Yeah. Yeah, and just be open to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is. It, and say, that's so cool. Thank you. And give grace to it. I mean, I, 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 you know, we both have thousands and thousands of people who follow us. But you know what? <coughs> you know, when it comes down to it, who fills us up? Because if we're not filling ourselves up, we can't fill others up to that full potential. Again, off the soapbox, love Molly. <laughs> ah, we love the soapbox. <laughs> Supper Love Sunday. That's it. So, you want me to ask you a question? No. I mean, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, that's another good question. Don't ask a question that you don't want the answer to. Or if it is, you know, it's all good. <laughs> so, here's here's one that kind of talks about values, I thought. <laughs> I can't wait to hear the answer. Would you rather be famous but just comfortable financially or extremely wealthy? But anonymous, and why? I know that's a wow. doozy. <laughs> so extremely famous, and what was what was the other so, part about being famous? <laughs> you can only be one famous. So no, extremely either famous, famous, but just comfortable financially, or extremely wealthy, but anonymous. <whistles> I know, but it gets at your values. It sure does. You know, it, it's. Um, I would have to say, I uh, you know, extremely famous. With and being comfortable, uh, you know, uncomfortably modest, so humble, modest with our money. It, it, you know, comfortably financial. Comfortably right? financial. Yeah. It, it's uh, it's simple. You know, I, I want to help people be healthy and live better lifestyles. You know, some people might see that as um, you know, some people riding around in jet planes and and giving uh, lectures here and there. Yeah. You know, if I can help, you know, a kid around the corner eat healthier and maybe get a you know and you know a little bit in return you know whatever it may be uh, a hug sometimes works you know it, it's what it's about you know it's it's you know I want I want to see you know parents and kids outside doing things actively together eating healthy uh, as you can hear our dog snoring in the background I just can't you know, say, uh, and, and and that's that's what I want. You know, I don't want to have to be paid, you know, millions upon millions of dollars to do this. You know, I don't need my 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 private jet, you know, taken off from the airport down the road instead of waiting in the big lines to, you know, fly me to my my uh, my via and my villa in Tuscany or whatever. No, I, I, it's not what I need. I'm I'm happy with my my 2003 CRV, and, and I'm happy, you know helping people, you know, one at a time, you know, change their lifestyles, become healthier, and, uh, and go, go that wrong. But, you know, you think about the flip side of being extremely wealthy and anonymous, you know, that could be a powerful mode as well. I mean, you can do so much good and be anonymous. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be sitting back wealthy you know, throwing money up in the air and rolling around it in a hot tub with, you know, no water, just, you know, money. You know, you, you... Did you ever have that dream money? It came very quickly to you. No, that's, that's, that's part about, you know, this, it's, it's, it's thinking on your feet. Got it. So, you know, but, you know, it's a, you could use that position as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not what I would want, but you can use that position as well to do a lot of good and, and, and you know, be a, a philanthropist. You know, you don't have to be... Um, no, to do to do good. You know, you, you have the money. You know, you can do things with that money. And who cares if you don't want to be known? Right. You know, some people are just like that. It, it's. Uh, I guess there was a gentleman. I forget where it was. It was somewhere out in the Rockies, Denver. You know, he was walking around handing out hundred dollar bills. Oh yes. You know, yeah. 10, 15 years ago. Right. I, he, guy was a multimillionaire. Right. You know, and it, it's it's stories like that. It's it's stories of a, uh, you know, you know that just you know get you. You don't have to, you know, be in the limelight to, to share the wealth, so to speak. And I think it does. It depends on your own situation, gifts, and talents mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Oh. 
And, and that just shows that you don't come from a place of judgment. And uh, a lot of, look, he's already cleaning up the dishes. You don't have to clean them up right now, honey. We can wait till the show's over. <laughs> I know what's coming next. <laughs> but do you? No, I don't. But, but that's it. These questions are meant to challenge your thinking. It involves cascade. Sorry. <laughs> you digress. <laughs> but, but ask yourself that question. What is important to you? Why is it what you do what you do? You know, how do you, how do you stand on certain situations? What do you think? Why do you think what you think? And that's what this is all about. So, uh, so you want to ask me a question? Sure. Okay. I will ask you a question. Then we have one left after that, right? Yes. Okay. Then we get to the pudding. The pudding. Looking back on how you were raised, what do you and don't you want to repeat with your own children? Wow. Well, first of all, I was I was blessed to raise be raised by two wonderful parents who love me and would do anything for me. First of all, that is a grace in and of itself. Um, the two people were very different, are very different, my mother and father. Um, I would say definitely in my father uh, and my mother. I don't know if it was naive or, or they were just free to let me do what I do. They just let me try different things. You know, it, so often a friend of mine, they call it bubble wrapping children. You know, we try to protect them because we know what will happen. My parents just kind of let me go and do and learn and grow on my own. Certainly there were times that said, may I please kind of give you some wisdom before you make a decision. But again, they always left it up to me to make the right choice. <laughs> sometimes I did well, sometimes I could have done better. <laughs> but, you know, that's what I would want to keep. Um, we call it life's lessons, right? Yeah, and, and it's the same thing. The more you fail, the more you learn, the more you grow, the bigger, better, mm -hmm. whatever you are. But I'd say the things that, and it's not what my mother gave me the passion for teaching. Um, and my father gave me the lesson of giving and philanthropy. But as my mother got a little bit older, she became more sedentary, not as moving and energized and eating healthy and um, somewhat negative. You know, that comes from watching a lot of TV, you know, all that stuff. I boycott it. You know, I don't watch a lot of TV. And, and it flabbergasted her. She's like, you what? I'm like, I figured you'd call me if it's something that bad. The world's ending, call us, please. <laughs> There's a meteor hurtling, please let us know. We'd appreciate that. Exactly. But again, you know, it, I've learned through growing that it's people's intentions that you need to seek, not, you know, cast stones at them because of their negative or whatever. But what I would not want to do is, is to, or what I want to be is a good role model in health. Uh, both eating and physically, and I work, I, I, I am not perfect at that, and that's one that I want to be that role model for Tyler, and I'm still working at that. Sorry, you okay. want me to ask no, we're a question? Good. No, we're good. Right, so, did you ask me all four questions? No, I have one more left to go. Oh, okay. Wait, how do I have two left to go? Because you, you ask me, I ask you. Okay, you ask all right, me. all right, all right. So, oh, this is a good one. I cannot wait to ask this question, and I bet you you can't either. So, to one another, what do you think is your worst habit? <laughs> what do others think is your worst habit? Wow. I'm going to say others think my worst habit is... Sometimes I don't control my emotional intelligence the way I should. And it's, um, you know, I rush to judgment kind of, you know, kind of mentality. It, it's, you know, I, I like to get out. Rather than taking the time to sit back and, and think about a situation, you know, I, I may just jump right in without my full knowledge of, of what's going on how I should handle it, and it gets me in trouble. Let's face it, it does. 
and it, it's my understanding, and it's one thing I work on. I have a coach, and, and you know, it, it, it gets to a point where it's kind of like, it's like every time we meet, it's me, you know, we're going over, we're role-playing in um, doing emotional intelligence stuff. And I think that's what people would think is, you know, my worst habit is I don't take the time to, um, you know, sit back, digest the situation, and, and, and move forward in a rational manner. And, you know, that's that's one thing I continually work on. You know, you know, for me, what do I think my worst habit is? Yikes. Oh, uh, wow. Is it that bad? No, I can't think. You know, I, I'm thinking there's... You know, it's, Maybe it could be the same one. It could be. Yeah, I'm, so I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I put this. I put the toilet seat down. I, I you know, I, I. What else do I? You know, I, I buy this. I get that. I'm, I'm trying to think. What's my worst habit? And I, it's probably the same one. You know, it really is. It's, uh, you know, you know, before it would have been saying, you know, my worst habit was the fact that I, I. I sat still. You know, I, I didn't make time for myself. I didn't make time to make friends. I didn't time to, when I, when I made friends, to develop the friendships. You know, I, I kind of would crawl back into a shell and, and, you know, that was a bad habit to get into and, you know, working out of that now. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it, and it's, it's, it's interesting to see when you develop friendships, how, how they go. Cause, you know, the friends I've made over the last couple of years, it is shockingly amazing as to, you know, how like we are. And when you find people that you're friends with, you, you kind of, you're on the same wavelength. And, you know, it, it's, you know, jokes are funnier because now I have somebody that understands my jokes with, with some of the friends I've made. And, uh... Sarcasm. It's a little dry. Yes. That's, that's why... He says, if I have to explain the, the, what is it? If I have to explain it, it's not really worth it. <laughs> That's, 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 that's why we, that's why we had this hole cut in the wall, because I was tired of having my jokes bounce off the wall, so at least I have a hole there for it to go through. And hit the other wall and bounce yeah, back. So at least I have a little more time for me to enjoy my, uh, my own joke. Yeah, but if you can't laugh at yourself, come on. You got, you know, right. I'm, I, you know, the jokes I tell, you know, I'm very dry sense of humor. It's the horse walked into the bar, the bartender said, hey, why such a long face? You know, that, that's kind of, you know, that's the gist of my humor. It's sarcasm, it's dry, it's quick wit. And uh, as our son is, is, is quickly coming into his own, it's the reenactment of anything Monty Python between the two of us. So, um, Alrighty, so moving right along. This is where we need one of those like big hammers and the guy like from Monty Python. Yeah. As long as you're not hitting me over the head with yeah. it. Oh my gosh. So, you have one question left? I do. Okay. Actually, I'm going to catch up to you. Oh, by the way, we're drinking Boxcar Beer. We love Boxcar Beer. It's a local craft brewery. Oh, my gosh. The owners are amazing. The beer is phenomenal. We were, we're not getting paid to say it. We just oh, love it. <laughs> but we were, you know, it was, it was, it was a toss-up between, you know, their, their brown ale uh, and, um, was it a 2005 Cabernet from Penn's Woods Oh, uh, yes. And, oh. and, you know, it's it's... We, ha we enjoy a beer or a glass of wine. You know, part of being healthy um, doesn't mean you don't have to enjoy those things. We enjoy having a glass of wine or, or you know, a glass of beer. And we, we've met wonderful, wonderful people through this. And unfortunately, uh, the Red Cabernet 2005 Pennsylvania 2012 Best Wine uh, didn't make it to the table because... It's in our belly. Yeah, we kind of enjoyed that one. So <laughs> Carly, send us more. No. Yes. Yeah, the owners are great at Pennswood Winery as well. They're fabulous, fabulous people. But anyhow, we digress. We What's do. Up? So, it is, describe your idea of a perfect romantic evening start to finish. Oh my gosh. We're really going to put this one? Really? Okay, so do I keep it clean? Uh, there's no funky music playing in the background, so you can do whatever you want. <laughs> That's a <like> joke. <laughs> I can't believe you picked that one. I would say... It was the page I opened up to. You know what? We're at the beach. Captain Hiram, specifically. That's where we got married. 
Sebastian, Florida. We're right on the Sebastian Inlet. It's we just have our beach towel laid out. You're in your swim trunks. We have a case of beer. <laughs> beer, not wine. <laughs> enjoy oh that. Case. Enjoy. Enjoy that raw zucchini wraps, veggie chili, <laughs> and that avocado chocolate pudding as we get set to go get our case of beer, folks. <laughs> just like listening to the ocean and and the sun would be setting and we wouldn't even be talking i think if we just we just like with a case of beer we better not be talking we got a lot to finish there like maybe not a case <laughs> but i wouldn't be carrying it you would be um i'll take the empties back yeah, yeah maybe we take a couple guinness and, you know bottles and we're cans no guinness is all you guinness is all you but anyhow i i think it would just be quiet like quiet and just enjoying one another not necessarily in words but just like you holding me you know i don't know it's just it's and falling asleep wait but then the tides come up whatever i you know i, I think that i mean it's beautiful and i'm, I'm sitting here i'm laughing because you know as, as molly's going through her description there i hear our son in the background go Ugh. <laughs> remember we're modeling the way yes. think it's gross now <laughs> So, <laughs> so there's the question. Okay, here's yeah. here's another one. And again, that was the love question. So if you need to stop the recording and go make that a perfect whatever, go for it. Because oh, on that note, we have our dessert. Yes. So oh, you still have one question. Too. I do. So you want to save it for before or after dessert? What are we talking about? Question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe so, maybe not. <laughs> okay. So why did you focus? Okay. Okay, why did you marry me? Swim trunks. Think of me in swim trunks. <laughs> Is that why I married you? Yeah. Why do you stay married to me? Wow. Why did you marry me and why do you stay married to me? Because you're my me? sugar mama. No. No, no. sugar's bad. No, that's right. <laughs> oh, I was fast on that. There you go. <laughs> you're my brown rice sugar mama. Mmm, um, chocolate avocado pudding mama. Why do I... Why? No, was it why did I marry you and stay married, or was mm. is it something? Why did I? Why, do why I did you marry me, and why do you stay married to me? Why did I? Why did I marry you? So you know, it was, I married you because I had a blast. You know, it was, uh, you know, it was the belly laughs and the, you know, the the, you know, the, the moments of uh, quiet, and it was it was. The there were moments of quiet. Yeah, that is tough with you, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, was, so, I, I forget where we're feeding her. Yeah, I think we were driving to Pittsburgh one time, and I had just read an article about you know how many words a man and a woman say in a particular day, and I think at one point it was just I you know don't talk, I'm listening to the radio. Molly's joking. She goes, don't you have anything to say? Well, I used up all my words. <laughs> You know, what can I do? So are you focusing so, on why you married me? Yes. <laughs> you know, so it was it was those moments. You know, it was um, you know, and, and why am I still married? I mean, look what we're doing. You know, we're we're. It took me a while to get here, and it took us a while to you know to to get this thing going. You know, but here we are, sitting here, uh, magically. It's it's quarter of seven at night or whatever it is, and and it's still light out so we must have like some magical powers too but we're enjoying this moment of, of having this wonderful chocolate avocado pudding filming in our house and you know doing what we can to you know bring some help to people you know and, and really be accountability partners where they might not have where you might not have that accountability partner you know so it's, it's things like that but it's also you know seeing the moments you know, as, as you've, you know, taken yourself back from four or five nights at, at events per week down to two, you know, the relationship that has grown between not only you and I, but seeing how your relationship grows uh, with our son. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's fascinating. You know, I, I'll go out, I'll, I'll go out with a friend and I come home, we have like five more fish. You know, we have like, you know, come check out our new snails, and, uh, you know. You know, so it's 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 interesting. You know, I almost sometimes I don't want to go out because I'm afraid to come back because I don't know if we're gonna have like alpacas in the yard or something. 
Chinchilla. No. <laughs> Nothing nocturnal. <laughs> so, you know, so with that, you know, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's why I think, you know, I, I, stay, I stay married. Yeah. And, and truthfully, I'm very grateful because while it's very easy for me to build businesses, it's not easy for Dan. Dan, you were raised by a manager of a retail store, and and um, your dad was a school teacher. You know, so the whole world of entrepreneurism was very foreign to you. So you know, me, you know, just to look at one another. I mean, look at each other and tell each other what you're grateful for, and what you're looking forward to for the next five years. I have a friend of mine who has this program that it's five-year marriage. Every five years, you revisit why exactly you're married and why do you stay married and what do you look forward to to the next five years. Why not? Because if what we think about, we bring about, and where you say you're going to be five years from now is where you're going to be, why not share it together? You know, again, um, I'm just lucky and grateful that we were able to grow back together and stronger and now help others. We encourage you through Supper Love Sunday and a few other podcasts that are going to be coming up and also Men's Weekend Getaway. That's going to be another thing because, you know, I'm sure it wasn't really easy for Dan to take some of the traditional roles of a woman. You know, traditional roles of a woman. What's that anymore, right? My father called him domesticated. I said, stop trying to mess him up. I love him that way. <laughs> but again, all these people, all these things uh, try to get into your life, connect back. Connect back with, with who it is, why you're there, and where you're going. Because your children need you, the future needs you, and you need you. So thank you very much for joining us for Supper Love Sunday. Well, I want to say one thing. I can't believe this is avocado. Oh, uh, you can't either. That's amazing. Um, and our son, too, seven-year-old, loves it. You know, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know if he's, I don't know where he is. I don't know if he wants to come out and, hey, Ty, and say, and say goodbye. Come out and help, say hello? Help say bye for us on, you know, from Supper Love Sunday. He might be, uh, he might be tending to his, uh, of animals. Oh, here he comes. Um, Come on in. He's been the camera guy, so he's got to be so he shutting off. Say, Hello. That's Tyler. <laughs> the camera guy for today. But I want to say thank you as well. Thank you for joining us. This has uh, been a wonderful journey that I've been on, and, and it's going to continue, and I want you all to uh, come back and join us again. And I, I promise, uh, next time we do this, make sure we'll have that Penswoods Winery sitting there and not in our bellies. we got to remember that... Uh, no matter how good it is, we got to save it for the shoot. So. <laughs> there you go. So thank you all for listening in and watching us, and here's to more Supper Love Sunday.